God, that's quick. Slaughter of the pair quotes. As the colonies expanded, trouble with the Indians was inevitable. In 1637, stirred by a common enemy, the whites joined against the Pequots in an intercolonial war managed by the Massachusetts colony and the Connecticut towns. John Mason and John Underhill were the leaders. The Indians were cornered of some 400 men, women and children only four escaped alive. The Pequots tribe was extinguished by this and a subsequent bloody slaughter, which although cruel gained peace for the colony for many years. Chubacabra, Supernatural Origin. In the history of the natural world to the supernatural, I found many weird things. But just because I don't know what it is doesn't make it supernatural. While the true heart of science is to always question even yourself. In the end, I have become an objective atheist. I am an atheist, but I want there to be more. In 1975, similar style killings of small town of Mocha were attributed to an El Vampiro de Mocha, the vampire of Mocha. Initially, it was suspected that the killings were committed by a satanic cult. Later, more killings were reported around the island and many farms reported loss of animal life. Each of the animals was reported to have had its body bled dry through a series of small circular incisions. Again, I guess the experts here could not determine the difference from a cult killing and a dog attack. A popular legend in New Orleans concerns a popular lover's lane called Grunch Road, which was said to be inhabited by grunches, creatures similar in appearance to the chubacabra. And the description of the Vampire of Mocha. The earliest reports of creatures are said by locals to date back to 1803. The Southern Cryptids has been called the Vampire of Farboro, Marigany, and Bywater, and the Demon of Downwater Road, dating back to the early 1800s. The legend of Marie Laveau tells of how some believe this form of chubacabra came into existence. How it attacked and nearly killed her. Laveau, near death, after this. Many said was this was when Mary Laveau churned up and against her voodoo and hoodoo ways and went back to being a good Catholic woman. You can also look up the devil baby at Haunted America Tours. A little shared insight to the shadowy world as some call it of ceremonial magics and rituals. Regardless of if you believe in magic, the faithful do exist. And somewhere right now, they are doing a spell. You don't know if it will work or not, but not really important here. The fact is it will be done and they will take action. And those actions will have physical repercussions, if nothing else, spilt wax on the ground. The fact if their faith was real or not is not always a factor. Seeing this legend, she was doing a ritual and a chubacabra showed up and attacked her. 
and scared her Catholic. A lot of information in this statement. I'll keep the magical terminology to its simplest, or this will go on for hours. Now really, simply investigation I should state more of. The scientific principle. Voodoo and Hoodoo uses Loas to use most of their magics. These are spiritual beings. They are kind of like the FedEx of magic. You request the magic, they run to the superior beings, gather the magic and bring it back to you. She was trying to summon and trap a chupacabra-like creature, it says, also known as a devil baby, as a Loa. She identified it as a Loa. It attacked her while she was in the woods. Could have been an animal though. Animal versus magic is not good fight to get into. So with her Loas not helping her, or possibly fleeing from her, as she was defeated by it, now, with no Loas, and being afraid of the woods, animals running around in it, time to become Catholic, I guess. Keep in mind, she could have had her own oh my god moment, where this person started to get so close to death, with fear and pain, that they thought they saw God. Or maybe they did. I personally feel it needs noting that Marie Laveau had faced anything supernatural that night, then she, if anyone, had the supernatural ability to deal with it. Not the case if she was just attacked by an animal. Now, some will question if she was even real. Well, state records prove that she was. But what she did is only in the oral stories. Her faith, its believers, and its magical practices do go on and therefore do exist. And according to those beliefs and practitioners know that this devil baby or chubacabra was the last one to take Marie Laveau powers. So her Loas went to it. So it has her power. She gave it up her powers to live. So it is possible that the faithful may want to recapture this power under their own faiths. Kind of like a Highlander situation where the lowest can be taken to increase one's own strength. Does it work? Does it matter? All that matters is that the wrong person believes a little too much and poof, dead goats. One veterinarian had said about chupacabra attacks, it could be a human being who belongs to a religious sect. It could also be someone who wants to make fun of the Puerto Rican people. Does not sound very normal of a killing, but regardless of what of these reasons are the right ones, none should be disregarded till all had been seen. And none of these descriptions sound again like dog attacks to me. For those officials that like the satanic cult theory, how about a hoodoo cult trying to do what Mary Laveau did? The most common description of the New Orleans grunch is a goat-like being appearing to have leathery or scaly black gray skin, sharp spines, long horns and quills running down its back. Stands about three to four feet tall. It's said to seem more intelligent and more human-like than the typical chupacabra. Able to open doors, use tools, and similar how to a monkey or a primate would. Although a few chupacabra purports do mention this as well, including some of saying they've had conversations with them. In the Philippines, another legendary creature called the Sijvin shares many of the same descriptions as the chupacabra. The Sijvin, or Sijben, is a creature of the Philippines mythology said to come out at night to suck the blood of victims from their shadows. The Sijben is said to emit a nauseating odor. It is believed to issue forth from its lair during the Holy Week, looking for children that it will kill for their hearts, which it fashions into amulets. It seems that we have a situation of what came first, the chupacabra or the creature itself. If the original report was a grunge, and when she described it, they had not heard of it and named it by its actions, the goat sucker, chupacabra. This classification chupacabra was compiled because some of the reports really didn't fit anywhere else. And in the research, I found this strange similarity. Thank you.
Hello, it's been a while since we've done one of these, um, and this is not a regular dance production meeting. What I'm going to do this time is, I've kind of been busy getting tying up projects and not updating everyone on what I've been doing. So I thought I should run through that. Uh, we've finished a few. The big ones here, what I've referred to before as the big three. I had to go get my cheat sheet. And they are projects that actually I started uh, back when I still had my kids with me. Back when they were still in school, before they grew up, had their own kids. And now they come to visit me with the grandkids. But it was a while ago I'd finished them. Sent them to some companies, got no definite, they liked, but they said nothing, they weren't interested in it. A story I called The Edge. Later on in years, as I noticed, it was a little packed full of concepts all at once, and they clouded each other. So I then cut them into four separate storylines that we're kind of working our way through here. Or I should say three, the big three. Um... And in that, I've been going through and putting those to a video through, oh, basically through images, through comic book, almost like showing a comic book. Um, and we just went ahead and add the voices. If any of these stories you guys read and were interested to or go back and find an interest in them, comment, let me know, and uh, I may pick them up again later. Uh, some of them do have a continuation after this point, and we'll address that here. Now... What we got is, for starters, uh, recently, kind of off the big three, finished one called End Games. Or still working. Uh, End Games is our newest project. One we've just kind of entered. We had two episodes done. We have three more to finish on that. Maybe more if it takes more to finish it. Uh, this was using a pencil test style of animation, old poser style. But it gave us something different to explore. That's the idea here, is we take an idea I've already had, worked out, and just apply them to a different style to tell the story in an unexpected way. Uh, that's the best way I'm going to learn on this. And that's why I do it, and hopefully someone else can find other things they enjoy from watching in it. Now, the reason I bring this up is Endgames actually ties into one of these other ones which we finished called Madhouse. In Madhouse, a certain character, who comes in uh, all burnt up, and he's in a tube being regenerated, is in a dream state. That dream state is the endgame story. Not really made clear at the time, and unless you see this, you probably may never get the connection. But the endgame's black and white series, five to six episodes, is a dream state of a man inside the asylum. Now, other ones that were finished was Law. Uh, this one was a futuristic police officer, captain known as Voltaire, and uh, his story kind of gave out how law enforcement would have to change the future concepts. But the people doing it wouldn't change as quick. So. Everyday issues, the dramas of everyday life become actually accentuated and become worse by the technological issue unless we are ready for it. That's what I wanted to address in that one. That was called Law. We finished that one. Now the third one, we're, finished, we're just entering into the final pieces. We've shown some of it on here called Evil DB, Evil Delivery Boy. That's just to show the furthest depth, the darkest side of, the, of this universe I was creating. A serial killer. And uh, how the ultimate human, hate to say, serial killers would be in a world of, you know, Hunger Games. The serial killer versus the upcoming metahuman come, coming along. I, I like the 
comic book. That's what I originally wanted to do is comic books. But I was doing grittier stuff. Well, back before they kind of did, but I didn't have the ability to get to the right people, I guess. It doesn't matter. You know, I enjoyed what people did. Uh, but now I'm getting my chance to show my stuff. That's what I'm doing. So we have that. Oh, that's right. I wanted to do how if you go to the old pages here on Damn Studio, you will find Edge. That is the original story as I put it out for a while. Before I took this big thick story and I chopped it into separate three separate films. Uh, each one about an hour. So I was really compacting it before because in that same amount of stuff. And really we don't have any room except for dialogue in those. So if you had all the effects and everything, the whole thing would have been way too much. So that would have been one of the reasons why I didn't get any work. Because that was just too busy. It wasn't. It was work to go through, and that's not what people want to do. Uh, when I was younger, I probably didn't understand that fully. I'm actually pretty sure I didn't. Um, I was an overachiever a lot, so as well as being a destroyer. But that's uh, just beside the point. Now, as this universe, as I cut it apart into different things, some things didn't fit. There'll be a series later on. After the completion of Evil DB, which will be picking up, maybe a little break in between, but what it will be is parts of stories that didn't fit when I cut them apart or became confusing the state, I will be pacing into their own pieces, which will kind of like, after the three are done, this will re with a certain part of the stories that will be carried on. Those then, when that's done, will be carried on in one which is all known as Church of Divine Harmony, or Divine Purity. It's going to explore the religious angle in this future world. All twistedly based upon a world I kind of saw coming. Not that it has, but it's what I believed at the time when I was younger. And some places I found I was right, other places I was even off the mark on my most wildest insanities. So, I thought I was screwed up. Reality proved me wrong. So we got all those done in the Taboo. It's the newest one we completed recently. Taboo actually ties all the way back to the origin of Madhouse. For the voice you're hearing in that is the voice of Taboo, an angel that later gets trapped in the bottom of Madhouse. And the experimentations are done, which leads to some of the craziness above. So, there we go. I updated you on some of the insanities of my storylines I've created, what had been done, and where they're going. Thought I should do that. Next time we'll have more on actual new projects we're doing and new things I'm doing with, you know, outside of the studio, which I'll bring back to the studio, of course. So, have a good evening, and we'll see you later. John Alden and Priscilla. Miles Standish's gruff character as a soldier has lent credibility credence to Longfellow's story of his courtship of the pretty Priscilla Mullins. It is a popular legend that the bashful Standish sent John Alden to court Priscilla for him, and that she, knowing Alden's heart, was not in his mission, suggested that he speak for himself. Alden did marry her. However, he lived to be the only surviving member of the original Mayflower Company.
Now you have influenced reality. The trick is to remain on the influence and not to slip into the offense. From this new nexus, a shaping takes place as you forsake you and become the. With great power comes great responsibility. You must maintain this ripple, expanding outward, where it will turn upon itself and eradicate itself and you. On the whole, progressing beyond pattern, with its three dim elements. Ripple, powerful, yet maintained. Patterns dependable and self-sustaining, but beware, they can continue on without you or beyond you. At time and over time, it can become you. the true meaning of this simple phrase. The human lips can even caress the word is more than they'll ever deserve. This is divinity, the Pandora's box, the fucking orgasm that steals all breath, the one that never ends. The one that let you realize that death loves you, accepts you, and always has and it always will. But this time, you feel the same for death. True love, if it ever exists. This is but a metaphoric expression of what I feel from the most hollowed of the spiral. Now we find a central element to finally. I benefit, and it of me, total unity. But true here can only be born of true love. But true hate can only be born of true love betrayed. I am as Lucifer Drophakeo when asked to lead the Garden of Ecstasy. Stopping a Farmhouse Frolic. Puritanism in American life and letters had become a symbol of restraint. It placed a curb on the boisterous expressionism of natural good spirits and was for many years a restraining influence on the social life of New England. Of great influence were the divines John Cotton and Cotton and Increase Mathers. After their dis decline, there was a lull until the fiery Jonathan Edwards stirred for the last time the dying embers of religious and semi-religious frenzy.